Hi everybody and welcome to my watercolour channel. Now today I'm going to be doing something that is seasonal, festive and it's a bird. So I'm sure you know what that'll be. Let's roll that intro and let's see what happens. Alrighty, welcome back. As I said at the start, I'm going to be doing something very seasonal, very Christmassy, and it involves a bird. Now, if you're in the UK, that can only mean one bird, and that is, of course, a robin. Now, I have used my robin reference, and it will be free to download on my uh, Patreon, or I hope very soon to put all of the references that you can use onto my website for you to download for free as well. But there, you do not need to have my photo if you don't want to. You can go onto Pixabay, Pexels. There are so many references to Robins on those, free to download and create your own unique Christmas card. And that's the essence of today. It's not just creating a bird painting, but it's making use of the season and creating something that you can actually use and print and send to your family and friends. And I'm sure that will go down very, very well. So I'm gonna, Get on, I'm going to get this one done, and I'll talk to each of you at the other end. Enjoy. Okay, so first and foremost, we're going to be using some masking fluid in this painting. There's a couple of types that you can buy, Windsor & Newton or Pebio. The Pebio one's good because it actually shows up better in blue. Now, one thing you've got to bear in mind, if you're going to use this stuff, and you're going to use a brush, use a very, very old brush, and dip it in some dish soap first. That way you stand a good chance of getting rid of the masking fluid once you've applied it. I'm just applying it in places where I want the snow to show. I'm also going to flick a little bit onto the background just to suggest one or two sharper pinnacles of snow when I come down further on in the painting. You can't really see them, but they will be there. Now the brushes I'm using are always uh, Rosemary & Company. You can see details in the description underneath this and every other video. And there is an affiliate link that you can use to help me out. Before we go any further, I just want to show you a quick exercise using any color, quite a dark one, will be good and just putting it liberally on a spare piece of paper. I just want to show you a little trick we're going to be using later on. It's instead of using salt and it's just to try and create an effect. Now I'm using clean water on my fingers and I'm just putting that onto the paint and letting it do its own thing. Let it dry. You can arrest it and stop any cauliflowers forming but that's what I will be doing later on in this picture. First and foremost though, we're going to get started with this lovely robin in the snow. Now I'm using a whole variety of warms and cools in this picture. You've got all those subtle blue shades, blue violets, lovely pale shades. The mixture of very weak tea, the colours don't need to be very strong at this stage. This is merely a first layer. So we're just getting set and we're putting all the browns in under the wings, all the blues around the top of the head and around the side of uh, the sort of side of the wings. We're going to put some lovely brown colors in sepia, umbers and some uh, lovely burnt sienna. And we're just coming down and we're just literally setting it up for other layers to be added later on. So every stage is a layer and between each layer we will dry each layer before we carry on. Now that's not to say that we don't put in a little bit of wet in wet. Sometimes you see me put a little bit of blue against the brown and vice versa. That's allowing small subtle bleeds. Now I'm putting in that first idea of the red breast. It is so weak. It's an orangey yellow. It's not a red and it's quite weak. It's just like weak tea. I'm putting a little weak color of blue into the beak and then I'm coming down with slightly stronger browns into the wing coverts and the tail of the bird. Now again this is just going to dry up and it's going to dry more pale because we haven't gone in strong. What I'm doing now though is I'm applying a second layer. We've dried the first we're moving on. You can see what I'm doing with the brush. I'm putting it on and pushing it down against the ferrule. Not digging it into the paper, but just allowing those little taps of color. And they suggest feathers. They suggest lovely, simple forms that could be feathers. So just to be clear, the first pass was the initial wash, and that's been dried before we continue. But the second pass that I'm doing or working on now is all about 
more detail. I'm not covering up all the colors underneath, but I'm actually looking and checking to see where I need to be a little bit more specific in the brush marks that I make. There's no point in just putting one color over another because you're just going to lose it or you're using the colors underneath to define and accentuate the colors that you're now putting on top. You're leaving little areas so you create lights and you work in reverse with watercolor because you actually leave your lights in place and get darker and darker and darker to your shadows. Unlike oils or other uh, media where you work the reverse to that. What I'm putting in is a little bit of color, a little bit of detail down at the bottom of the breast there and I went into the blue and I'm putting the first pass of dark in the eye. Be very, very careful. Uh, you you can't go too mad here. You've got to be very, very careful that you do not go where you don't want the paint to go. You can't lift it very easily. So I wanted to leave the catch light in place. Now what I'm doing is another pass. I'm coming over a dried area of paint. I'm adding more and more detail. I'm mixing between brown, brown umbers, sepia, and some of the blues because a lovely robin has got cools and warms in his feather. You know, when you've got a, a, a snow scene, when you've got all that cool light of snow around him, he tends to not be as fiery colored as you would see him in summer. You know, when you've got all those lovely sunshiny days and trees and grasses and everything else, he will appear more vibrant. But here, the light is cooler. The snow is a cooling factor. And so you have to look at that. And there's a lot of blue grays on his feathering and I'm trying to define that. I'm also checking at all the areas where I need to put shadow in. Shadow underneath, under the tummy, coming down towards the legs. Now they are cool because they are reflecting the um, snow that's all around his feet. I'm coming back in because I wasn't quite happy with that. I needed to put in more dark so I've done that and I've also checked the size and I think I do come back later and add a little bit to it. I felt that it was a little bit too small and I wanted to increase the eye and make it more I don't know photogenic I don't know but I felt that the reference needed it to be a little bit bigger and they are they're really cute birds to look at. But all the time you can see me refine, refine, refine. What you're not seeing in this video is all the times that I'm stopping and drying. Now, that's not to say I, as I said earlier, some of it is wet in wet. And I do allow little areas just to fuse into other areas to create a lovely little effect. But overall, I do uh, allow the layers to dry before I proceed on to the next one. Certainly with this painting, I'm looking at the feet. Now, I'm pretending that the feet are all there and I may have already covered some of it up with blue, um, you know, the masking fluid. I'm not worried about that because if they, where I've painted, if that disappears when I take the masking off, so be it. But at least I've I allowed it and I painted all the areas. I'm not going to worry about what happens later if it appears white. I just treat that as a bit of snow. So you'll have lost and found with the feet, basically. But again, I'm going in another layer, checking. And every successive time I do this, I'm putting less information in. So I'm actually using the brush almost like a pencil. I'm drawing with it as much as I am painting with it. I'm looking at the detail. I'm refining my marks on every successive pass of the bird. And in this painting, I am actually painting the bird first thoroughly before I move on to any other aspect of this painting. I felt that it would be a nice way to show you that you can paint the bird on a white background and this leads me to a great idea because if you did this if you painted the bird and you made a wonderful job of it then you can photograph and scan it with the white background and that can make a tremendous uh, illustration it can make a great christmas card or even a great print without any background to it maybe just the post that it's sitting on but not necessarily a background and you can then add a background and that's why I'm doing it this way and either way will make a great Christmas card so not to worry about that it just gives you almost two pictures it's almost you can sense like an illustrator would do his painting in this way or her would do their painting in this manner and they would have a lovely white background that they can 
uh, either do nothing to and they have a perfectly good image or they can actually add to it and that's what I'm going to be doing. What I've just been doing here is putting the first initial washes on the post nice warms a few cools a few darker ones i'm putting wet in wet and allowing the cooler color to mingle and merge with the lighter warmer color and that's very very deliberate and i want this lot to dry up before i move on to any other aspect the bird is done the post has, has its initial wash so everything is now dry very dry be aware of that make it sure it's very very dry and I'm putting clean water with a bigger brush over the whole of the remainder of the background. I'm being very careful that I take the water only up to the merest little bit towards the bird, trying very hard not to touch the bird. I'm making various mixes, not very heavy mixes at the moment, a little bit like tea, soft greens, uh, sepias and umbers and thalocyanin green, all going together a little bit more warm going into some of it but I'm now cutting very very tight to the bird I'm trying hard not to go over any aspect of the bird but at the same time I really don't want to leave any lines around the bird not unless I'm deliberately leaving a little bit of white highlight if it was a sunny situation and I was putting nice green leaves behind it I might well leave a little bit of white paper to denote a little bit of highlight to the top of the bird but that's not the situation in this painting so all I've done is been very very careful a nice tip to my brush taking my patience take your time there is no race to this you do not have to uh, get this done in two minutes you do have to be aware that if you leave it too long when you're putting a wash on like this that you do stand the risk of bits drying up and leaving hard edges edges sorry so that's why i wet the whole thing to start with and i think that really is important i've gone over with a much thicker layer of paint now less water more paint probably like a bit of milk and of weak tea and i've added a stronger color still the same color mixes maybe a little bit of indigo in there as well but it's just coming down and in real time i'm just showing you how long it's taking me just to cut around the front edge of this bird there is a little bit of white showing here that's not a problem because i can come over that later with a little stronger orange and build that into the background what you don't want is a whole raft of white marks around the entire bird because it'll look like you've just cut it out and stuck it onto a background. That's not the idea at all. So you have to be very, very careful when you cut round and as much care in cutting round because you don't want to go over any of your bird either. So just be aware of that. Now I'm coming in, I'm filling in the background, I'm mixing up with some more warm colours, some more umbers, and maybe a little bit of sienna going into that, just changing it so that it, it dries up. The little bits of white that you see in there are one or two areas of uh, masking fluid that I flicked on earlier. You didn't actually see that, um, but there's a little bit of masking fluid that I, I put on earlier, and they will come off and create more distinct marks of snow but what i'm getting ready for now is to put on another layer and it's going to be even darker still less water much more paint that's the trick if you don't want horrible cauliflowers if you put on more water now too much water that would just push all those other pigments away and create awful cauliflower marks which you wouldn't want so less water more paint is the trick every successive time you add a bit more into that wash just put a little bit stronger paint mix in there a little bit dark on the tail just to let it mold into the background but even now i am being very very careful about how i literally put the paint on around the bird i don't want any issues with that letting it dry a little bit because i want to get ready to put on that splash you remember the one i showed you earlier in the painting we're going to use that same technique now so while i'm doing that i'm just putting on a little bit of a color extra layer to this um, post that the bird is sitting on and some blues and cools just a little bit more information but i'm not blotting out all that initial color that's underneath it is merely a second pass in the same way here we go bang just splat it around 
make it as random as you can i am a little bit heavy-handed and i probably put a little bit too many in one or two places but that's what i did a few passes a few splats and you can see them starting to take effect now the paint to the bottom left is a little too dry i waited maybe a little too long but i think we got away with it i just cleaned off any water that splashed on the bird i don't want any issues with that so i took that off with a piece of clean kitchen towel no problems with that what i'm doing now is i'm using kitchen towel i'm turning it all the time i don't want to pick up color and put it back down again what i'm doing is where there is quite a bit of water on the paint remember what i said about water too much water can push the colors and make a horrible cauliflower it will do that in this as well if you're not careful so what i'm doing is i'm tapping on the spots where there are water droplets and it is taking off the color and it's arresting by taking off the water well as well it's arresting the movement of paint and in certain cases where it's a little bit darker a little bit wetter it gives some glorious white marks and so long as you keep remembering to turn your towel keep moving it around and not keep using the same piece and just one single dab don't rub it don't mess around with it just one simple dab it will take that spot off and we've got instant snow distant snow other people would call it bokeh which is that out of focus look behind a subject that's up close it can be used for that reference too you can actually use the same idea but in there later on when it's all dry we will rub it off and you can see a lot more of the masking fluid as it comes off which is what i'm doing now i'm taking off the area of the snow on the top of the post now all of this painting was most thoroughly dry before i even started doing this if you don't if there is any dampness in the paper fibers cotton fibers this is a cotton rag don't forget that uh, you will end up having a torn piece of paper or worse so just be aware of that make sure it's thoroughly dry before you do it and then take off that now i'm just tidying up the bird all those little edges that i said that i may have missed a little bit more information a bit more dark so i've just looked at it over time and wanted to add a few bits of information to the bird a little bit of dark under the eyes all those bits and pieces but there is also more of the orange got to go in around against the green i'm putting a darker edge along that defining the beak i actually made it a little bit too big so i'm just coming back in there using a bit of the green which i kept to just shorten the beak a little bit but here i'm going in and i'm putting some information on the bird to let it sort of blend into the background and no hard edges softening it off i don't want any water to push either the green or the orange so that's what i'm doing with that as a resting when you see me tap off a color with a piece of kitchen towel it's normally because i either need to arrest the water flow movement or indeed just it's the color may have been gone on a little too heavy a little too wet and i just tap it off so that i don't get a problem or take off a little bit of the pigment if it's a little bit too dark that's why i have a piece in my pa in my hand i'm putting a very subtle blue shades a little bit of uh, thalo silene blue and cobalt in there to create a little bit of shadow in the snow just suggestions that's all it is i'm not going to paint the whole thing blue just adding little bits in and i'm also now i've got that hard edge uh, where the masking fluid is against the post i want to soften that too so i'm now putting other colors in warms and cools yet again defining the bird on the post defining the post itself looking at the little fissures and splits in the timbers and that really is the final part of this painting this is just bringing the whole thing together this is just the final bits and pieces one little tip about rubbing this off when you rub off masking fluid use a kitchen towel not your fingers you don't leave grease and therefore you can go back over it secondly don't do it anywhere near your wet paint palette if you've got lovely soft uh, pans of color and this stuff flicks everywhere if you get it in there you're going to start mixing up little bits of rubber in your painting in a future painting so just be aware of that little tip i've done it myself 
Okay, with that warning said and done, I'm signing the painting. I don't ever sign my paintings in very, very strong colors. I like to keep them nice and discreet. And I'm also just gonna add a few final touches to the post. Now, it's the I's and T's as always. When you look at a painting, you make sure that you've covered all your bases and there's nothing more you can really do. These little dark fissures in the splits of the post really do finish it they add that third dimension in the same way as the shadow under the wing of the boat they are all cast shadows little dark strong contrasty marks that add that final bit of detail all i'm going to say now is have fun have a go at this i catch each and every one of you in the next video take care bye bye Thank you everybody, I had a heap of fun doing it. I'm sure you did too and got something from it. There's nothing like getting into the spirit of Christmas to have a lot of fun and especially with painting. And don't forget, you can get that uh, reference off of my Patreon for nothing. As long as you're learning from it, that's fantastic. I'm also gonna put a lot more references on my website soon so you can go there also to download but there are also those free sites where you can get a variety of other robin references and also christmasy type birds maybe the red cardinal something like that that you can download and use that to make your own unique card now we used a lot of different techniques in this one and i had a lot of fun with that and it sort of makes you think about all the different things you can do to create different effects in your watercolor so i hope you'll remind yourself of those when you do your one now it just remains for me to say that if you have enjoyed this video please give it the thumbs up it does tell youtube that i'm a channel and this video is well worth promoting and pushing out to far more people than it ordinarily would do so that would help me an awful lot and if you're not a subscriber the same thing it doesn't cost you anything hit that old subscribe button click the bell icon it tells you when i upload a new video which is every friday at three o'clock so i look forward to your company again then and above all if you don't uh, comment i won't know what you might like to see so put comments in i love to read them and i'll always answer them and it's great to, if you've got something that you would like to see me cover in a future video do that that would be great so what else can i say happy painting yes that's the biggest thing happy painting enjoy what you do enjoy your practice just keep at it keep going and i am also going to create a new um, Facebook page that will be open to all the um, people that use my channel to create work from what I put up there as videos so it's a place that you can post them if you just use the hashtag or the page which I think we are calling um, I forget what we're calling but I'll put it in the link underneath this one and uh, in the description and you'll know what that's all going to be I think it's going to be painting with Paul apps or hashtag painting with Paul apps so use that and you'll be able to go on there and if you've done a, a piece of work from one of my videos it'd be great for you to see to show it and and for us to see it and everyone to enjoy it so I've rambled on enough but I'm going to wish each and every one of you uh, happy painting time stay safe wherever you are if i don't see you before christmas happy christmas and enjoy that time with your families so take care catch you all in the next video bye bye to the painting channel today i'm going to be doing something very festive so let's <laughs> That didn't go well. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Start that one again. I'm getting in the festive spirit. <laughs> I'll come back in a minute this again <laughs> now i've got an airplane going over hi everybody welcome back as i said at the start i am doing something very festive <laughs> i am honestly hi everybody uh, <laughs> welcome <laughs> welcome everyone you can't write this stuff can you <laughs> 